Dr. Bijan, Chief Quality Officer for Parkview Health System. Given the rise of the Delta variant and all of these vaccine mandates that are rolling out across the country, we thought it would be a good time to get together with you folks with a Q&A about vaccine safety. So thank you for sharing some questions with me, uh, and let's go and bust some myths. First things first, I am a general surgeon. I'm not a virologist. But I've been dealing with the COVID pandemic and leading Parkview Health System and its healthcare heroes through this pandemic over the last 18 months. I'm fully vaccinated with Pfizer and I'm very grateful for my immunity. Unfortunately, I have lost many friends and patients to the COVID-19 infection. And I understand there are many good reasons to be hesitant about vaccines today. So let's start with the simple stuff. What are mRNA vaccines? What we've been able to do is take a harmless piece of spike protein right off the COVID-19 virus, put that in a syringe, coat it with mRNA, put that in your body, and it stimulates our body to produce antibodies that are going to protect us. That mRNA does not enter our cells, it does not interfere with our DNA, and it is destroyed by our body within 24 hours. This is brand new technology, and I foresee it being used for all vaccines in the future. We've been studying it for about a decade. We've studied it with influenza. We've studied it with Zika virus and rabies and CMV. We've even used this technology to target chemotherapy and cancer care. So it is not new. I mean, it is new, but it is not unknown. What about the J&J &J or Janssen vaccine out there? How does that compare? That is what we call an adenoviral vector. It uses that same spike protein, but marries it with a common cold virus. We put that in the syringe and we use that to stimulate immunity. The mRNA and the adenovirus, they're just two ways to get this harmless protein from the COVID-19 virus into our bodies. The J&J vaccine is very similar to traditional vaccines like influenza. There's decades of research around those kind of vaccines. The good news about the J&J is it's only one dose. That gets you to about 83% immunity, but as you may have all read in the news, there are some boosters coming for some folks. The mRNA vaccine, we've talked about a newer technology. It does require two doses, 21 to 28 days apart, but that gets you to about 94% immunity against COVID-19. And I'm gonna go into the boosters in a little bit. Do vaccines have side effects? Yes, they can. Just like any medication, side effects can occur. Fevers, fatigue, arm pain, muscle aches, joint aches, these are the common side effects. They are usually mild to moderate in severity. They occur within the first two to three days of your vaccination, and they resolve on their own within one to two days. Of course, you can take Tylenol, ibuprofen, and Benadryl to accelerate the resolution of these symptoms. For the mRNA vaccines, we know that those side effects are more common after the second dose. If I talk to you about my experience, I felt absolutely nothing with my first injection of Pfizer. But on my second dose, I was tired. It took me about six hours of Tylenol to let the fever break, and then I was just fine. I recommend getting these vaccines on a Friday just before the weekend so you're not too sick for the work week. What about serious long-term side effects from vaccines? Let me reassure you all, we've been using vaccines for about five decades. There are no vaccine side effects that don't show up in the first couple of days. There are no long-term side effects from any vaccine in history ever. Long-term side effects occur in long-term medications. I take a blood pressure pill. If I take that pill every day, then in about four or five years, I'm probably gonna have a long-term side effect from that pill. Vaccines are more or less one and done. You take them, they do their job, they're eliminated from the body. They don't linger in your body. Now, there have been some serious side effects like blood clots and Guillain-Barre syndrome reported. There's a one in a million chance of having one of those side effects. And you should know that those side effects are 100% treatable and they are temporary. They do get better with time. I believe there are hundreds and millions of doses of vaccine that have been administered, especially with COVID-19 around the globe. People are healthy, safe, and protected today. Believing some of the myths out there about vaccines is not, as same as, not the same as getting core true facts from a trusted authority. 
So I'd like to go into some commonly asked questions and I would ask you all to speak to your doctors. Talk to your doctors about getting vaccinated, whether it's good, whether it's bad for you, and where, and help you make a good decision. Question number one get commonly gets asked, were vaccines developed too quickly? That is categorically false. All vaccines and medications that are released in the United States go through four phases uh, of study. Phase one is a smaller group of patients where researchers try to ask the question, is the vaccine safe? Are there serious side effects? In phase two, we expand to several hundred patients where the researchers try and ask the question, what are the most common short-term side effects and does the vaccine actually work? Does it produce the immune response that we need? Phase three is when we study the vaccinated folks against a control group that of non-vaccinated folks and try and figure out, hey, if we give someone a vaccine, does the immunity provide protection? And then finally in phase four, that's where we are at today, the real world studies where the vaccine gets approved and we study them over time. This is a normal process for all medications. No shortcuts were taken with COVID-19 vaccines. Let me assure you of that. I get told there's no long-term data on COVID-19 vaccine safety. And I would say, yes, that is partially too, true. But there is no long-term data on any medication when it hits the market. We study this over five to 10 years and figure out if there's any long-term effects. Now, I will tell you in our history with vaccines, there are no long-term side effects. But if we studied vaccines for the next five to 10 years before we release them, millions more people will die and the pandemic just rages on. I believe vaccines are safe. I am vaccinated. My team is vaccinated. Most of my healthcare heroes are vaccinated. The only long-term data point that we really need to care about is how long will my immunity last and will I need a booster? That's the long-term data point that we should all really care about because I'm not a fan of needles and I don't want too many shots if I can avoid them but I understand the role they play in keeping us healthy. Do COVID-19s affect fertility? This is categorically false. The mRNA technology is designed to stimulate one thing and one thing only, that is the production of antibodies and immunity. The body destroys the mRNA, it does not integrate with our DNA, there is absolutely no evidence to say it's gonna affect fertility long-term I recommend you get vaccinated whether you're pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or breastfeeding. This is just a rumor started on social media. It is categorically untrue. Why do I have to get vaccinated if I already had and I recovered from COVID-19? This is another great question. COVID-19 is like influenza. It likes to mutate a lot. We all see what's going on with the Delta variant. Natural immunity from a COVID-19 infection lasts somewhere between six weeks to about 90 days. After that, your immunity is going to fade and you're vulnerable to reinfection. We at Parkview have already seen a, a dozen patients and employees get infected for the second time and even the third time as these waves of infection keep coming. Immunity from COVID-19 infection is not durable over time. It's not like chickenpox. It's not like measles, where if you have the infection, you're protected lifelong. Vaccine-related immunity at least seems to be more durable and more protective against infection. It's more powerful uh, as a shield against this infection. Now, we are re reading the news. There are boosters coming for some folks. If you're immunocompromised, the two doses of MRA vaccine probably don't provide long-term immunity and you need a booster. For people like me who work in healthcare, who take care of COVID patients, do I need more protection than regular folk in the community? Absolutely. So they're likely boosters coming for me. Today, we as healthcare workers take an influenza shot every year. And that's for the same reason. Influenza likes to mutate like COVID. So we need a regular shot to keep us protected. So if you are at high risk for COVID because you work in a hospital, in a healthcare setting, in a group home where you might be exposed, more than likely, boosters are going to be recommended for you. But I don't believe they're going to be recommended for everybody. Can you get COVID-19 infection even though you are vaccinated? Yes, it's possible. That's the truth. But we know this today. Getting a COVID-19 vaccine means if you do get exposed to COVID, your infection is milder, you recover quicker, 
It keeps you out of the ICU. It keeps you out of the hospital. It keeps you off a ventilator. And it can save your life. It prevents you from dying from this infection. Colorado has vaccinated over 3.2 million people over the last six months. We've only had 5,818 breakthrough infections. So the chance is really low, 0.003% so far. So the vaccines are doing their job. They're keeping people healthy and out of the hospital. I get asked, isn't a vaccine mandate illegal? No. If you look back at our history, the first vaccine-related court case was in 1905 in Massachusetts. And the Supreme Court, through our history, has held up that vaccine mandates for pandemics and epidemics is 100% legal. Today, we have mandates in all walks of life. We mandate seatbelts in cars, vaccinations prior to daycare and going to school. In healthcare, we mandate influenza vaccines. While we honor some medical and religious reasons not to get vaccinated, the vast majority of us embrace these healthcare mandates to keep everybody in the community safe. Take another lesson out of history. Look at what we've done with smallpox and polio. These were two devastating diseases that affected our children. President Eisenhower put a national vaccine mandate against polio. Our grandparents got vaccinated, our, our, our great-grandparents got vaccinated, and we were able to put an end to those pandemics. COVID-19 is no different. We're in the same boat. We need to get ourselves immunized so that we can put an end to this pandemic. In conclusion, COVID-19 vaccines today are just not recommended for anybody under 12. I believe the research is coming and vaccines for kids are coming. If you have had any serious prior vaccine reaction, now this should be extraordinarily rare, you are eligible to skip this. But everybody else out there, I highly recommend you get vaccinated, whether you've had COVID before, whether you've been exposed to COVID recently, when you're immunocompromised, if you're pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or recently delivered, and even if you are breastfeeding, we know that the mRNA technology does not pass through breast milk. I'm gonna leave you with a few final thoughts. Number one, everyone needs to understand that there is no good treatment for COVID-19 infection today. No good treatment, no good medication. All our treatment is just supportive. You're gonna to have to fight this infection on your own if you're gonna beat it. There's a one in a million chance of a serious vaccine side effect. You have a one in 256,000 chance of winning big at a slot machine in Black Hawk or Vegas but you have a one in 100 chance of dying from COVID-19 infection, even if you're healthy. And more seriously, you have a one in 10 chance of a serious life-changing health issue if you got the COVID-19 infection. Think about your heart, think about your lungs, think about your ability to participate in life and do the things that you love and enjoy. COVID can rob you of that. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been useful. Please feel free to submit questions in the comment section here or email them to Ryan Severance at Parkview. We will follow up with any other questions out there. Be safe out there, everyone.